Good morning. Today we're going to be setting up the installation of Eclipse for C++ development on a Windows 10 machine. So we start off by setting up our MinGW environment. So we have downloaded the MinGW setup option. We go ahead and hit install on that. Uh, we want to install default to the MinGW folder. Do not put spaces in this. It's very important we keep this as just default for that. It makes it really easy. Go ahead and hit continue on that as well. And it does take some time to download this. So we'll go ahead and let that to go ahead and get that progress happening. Now that we've finished downloading this, as you can see, we've processed 112 out of 112 items. We're going to hit continue. And in here, we want to make a couple uh, specific selections. We're going to go over to the MinGW Developer Toolkit, and we're going to put a checkbox on that and mark the installation. We have our MinGW Developer Toolkit, our base system. We have the G++ compiler. We don't need to worry about Objective-C, Fortran, or ADA, so we'll leave those alone, as well as the msys.base. So we've got those things. We're going to write it for that. We then go over to the installation drop-down menu, and we choose to apply changes and it's okay to install we're going to install 110 new things choose apply it takes a bit to have that happen once the download is already has finished you want to go ahead and just go ahead and press the close button obviously it's got it on there we've installed again the developer tools the base the G++ compiler as well as the msys base structure for that we can also go ahead and close then our MinGW installation manager we're done with that for now we now need to make it set so that we have the MinGW slash bin slash added to our path for our system. To do that, we're going to go ahead and click on the start button. To add that, we want to go to the start button. We're going to go to the settings option, and we're going to choose the option to edit the system environment variables. We click on that. We're going to choose the environment variables button right here, and we now have this lovely thing right here. And we want to find the path variable. We're going to click on path and choose edit. What we want to do in this is we want to add a new path to this. We're going to add a new field. I'm going to go down here, and we're going to do C colon backslash min GW slash bin slash. Okay, again, matching that same path that we structure we see right here, starting with C colon backslash all the way through, and go ahead and hit OK. And again, that's added to the path variable, and what you're adding to that is C colon backslash min GW slash bin slash. And we're going to test that right here. We're going to go ahead and go to the command line. We're going to test it out by typing in G++ at the command prompt. That should give us access to see that we have the compiler installed. We verify that right here by getting that fatal error, no input files. That means it does see the path to G++ from the, on that bin directory, but it didn't work because we do not have actually a file specified in that, which is actually exactly what we want to see. So we'll go ahead and we'll close that window right here. And we're going to go ahead and hit OK on that. And again, we just added the min GW slash bin slash to the path variable for our environment variables. Once you have Eclipse running, you want to go ahead and go over to the Help menu. Under Help, we want to choose the Install New Software. And that brings us to this lovely available software link. We want to go ahead and click on the Add button. In the Add button, we're going to add a repository. This is available on the class website. We can also get it directly off of the uh, downloading for Eclipse CDT. We go ahead and pull that open. And we want to grab that P2 repository software and copy that link address. We'll just copy it straight from that. Again, grab that from there. I'm going to call this C++ dev, and we'll paste that appropriate value in there and choose OK. Once that's going, we'll see it has its working with it, telling us where we're grabbing the information from. Once it uh, finishes going from pending, we're going to grab everything on this. We'll select all, and we're going to choose option for next. Tells you what's basically being installed. Lots of stuff we don't have to worry about. Hit next again. We do have to accept the terms of the agreement for that software and hit finish. Once it finishes installing, it's going to say that we need to restart Eclipse and we'll say yes for that. Restart Eclipse, have it reload. And again, we can access the information off of the CDT downloads page off of Eclipse. Once the Eclipse uh, has installed, we have this new welcome screen showing that we have access now to C and C++ development. We'll go ahead and close that welcome screen right here. And you also notice that we have these lovely build, play, stop buttons that are installed with this as well. We're going to make a new project to verify it installed properly. We're going to go ahead and go to File, and New. And we're going to choose an Other because we're making a C++ project. We're going to go to the C, C++ project structure, and click on the down triangle, and choose a C++ project, and choose Next. Again, standard rules for project names, just give this something that makes sense, and like so, first C++. And we're going to choose the option for a Hello World C++ project. We want to make sure that we do not choose cross GCC. 
Instead, we always want to make sure we choose the MinGW GCC, the GNU C compiler for that. All these other ones are things we don't want to use. They're installed, but we are never going to use them in class nor for most projects. Go ahead and hit choose the next option if you wish. This is where you can put your author. And because I hate Hello World, we'll get rid of that. And the source folder will be by default the source folder. Always good to do. Our next again, we're going to choose both a debug and a release version. We choose finish again for this. Over here in our package explorer, you will see the beginning of that. We want to choose yes for the C++ perspective. In our C++ perspective on the project explorer, it looks just like we've been using with uh, Java as well. And we're going to see the beginning of this. We have a couple of red X's as this first gets built and ready to set up. Again, we have all these extra windows we can close out that we'll never be using, like the build targets, the task list, etc. And we have our lovely editor window. We have right here our um, pound include IO stream using namespace SD, just like our standard C++ setup. And we have an int main method, and we can go ahead and choose our settings to allow that to have vertical alignment of our squiggles like we normally do. We're using a C out statement so we have access to that, and returning zero for our default right there. And to make sure that regardless of which version of Windows we're running on, this is going to be uh, perfectly happy, we added the line of int stop and then a CN statement for stop. So we can wait for user input to catch that, making sure it doesn't automatically end before we're ready. And we go ahead and hit the hammer icon to build that program. That builds it. We can then launch in run mode. As you can see right here, we have that happening right here with Greenstall Mammals. We also can go over to our debug folder, click on the down triangle, click on the executable name that is listed right there, we'll right click on that, and in the right click menu, go down to run as, and then select a local C++ application. That gets us so we can actually run it right there and we have the actual runnable program we can choose from. As you can see, we also have that uh, version right here. Type in a number, hit enter, and it terminates the appropriate value with a return code of zero. So we've got a quick little thing right there. Just as a quick review as to what we've been doing today so we can see all the things we did. We have the idea of setting up our um, MinGW installation. We use that using the MinGW installation manager. Right here we make sure we select the developer toolkit, the base, the G++ and the base for MSYS, making sure we have all the required libraries ready to go. Then we go to the installation drop down and choose to apply changes. Since we've already installed it, that's not going to be available. You can go ahead and quit that for now. We then make sure we have to add our system variable to make sure that's set, uh, set properly. We access that by clicking on start, going to settings. The fast way is right here. If we start typing the word environment, we can say edit the system environment variables. From there, we go down the environment variables. We choose the system variables section, not the user variables. We go to find the path location. We choose edit on that. We create a new field. In that new field, we type in c colon backslash mingw backslash bin backslash. And that's the path to the directory where we'll find all the information for running the C++ compiler. We say OK on that and OK again to make sure we have that ready to go. We also have the idea that we want to make sure we add the features to Eclipse we're looking for. That is the CDT download for that. So if you just Google Eclipse CDT download and you can get the correct version of that for your Eclipse, you add that to Eclipse in the install new software section under the help menu. So you go to help, install new software, go to the add site, put that name and the appropriate uh, path right there, set OK, and then select all and say next until you're done. Getting that installed restarts at once for Eclipse, we're good to go. And then we can also verify that we have properly installed C++ by going to the command window. We do uh, Windows Run, type in CMD to open up that window. And if we type in G++, that should give us the information that there's a fatal error because there's no input files because we have not actually loaded a file when we're trying to call that compiler. So that error is actually a good thing, meaning we actually install the files properly. So we go ahead and we can close that out of here as well. And so just to review, we've installed C++ for Windows and had that ready to go. And again, for the information on that, you want to make sure you have base, MSYS, G++, and developer toolkit from the MinGW installer, making sure you add the path system environment variable to support ccom mingw backslash bin backslash, and make sure you add Eclipse's support for Eclipse CDT download and copy that and add it to your project. Once you're there, you can go ahead and do that and make sure when you click your Eclipse projects that you choose the GCC compiler and not any of the other compilers. And thanks, have a great day.